Today I'm just going to talk about the vagus nerve and how it affects the gastrointestinal symptoms. It's interesting, people come in often with uh, clicking, grinding, crunching in their neck, and then they have terrible migraine headaches, you know, neck stiffness, disabling symptoms, dizziness, a ring in the ear, swallowing difficulties, and they're coming here for that. But, all, but as far as our assessment, our overall assessment, we start asking them about gastrointestinal symptoms, such as bloating, a very sensitive stomach, constipation, then diarrhea. Some of the people have Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and they would have no idea that it's from this, their cervical instability. See, the vagus nerve, the cell bodies of the vagus nerve run right in front of C1. And the amount of neurons in the vagus nerve is about 100,000, and those 100,000 have to tell the 100 million neurons in the enteric nervous system what to do. So you can imagine if somebody has C1, C2 instability and the vagus nerve input to the digestive tract is hampered, there's gonna be a lot of enteric neurons in the digestive tract not working correctly. When the vagus nerve is working correctly, it tells the stomach to secrete stomach acid. So if you have a vagus nerve problem, you could not be digesting your food very well because it can't break it down because of a lack of stomach acid. So what would that cause? That would cause gastroesophageal reflux, right? Because the food's just sitting in there. It would cause bloating. The vagus nerve also stimulates the pancreas to make enzymes. So think of the double whammy. You can't make stomach acid, then your then you're, uh, pancreas can't make enzymes to digest the food. Again, then the food's not getting absorbed. So of course you could get cramping and diarrhea because the food's not getting absorbed. Plus you're gonna feel very tired because you're not absorbing the nutrients from the food. The vagus nerve also tells the intestines to contract. So then if the vagus nerve isn't working right, you could also get constipation because there's people that they, they, they have to take a laxative to uh, just have a bowel movement. If you're somebody like that, you should get a digital motion x-ray to see if you have cervical instability. Because it could be that your terrible constipation that you've had for your whole life is actually a upper cervical or cervical instability issue. Even secretions from the liver and, ev and also the spleen, which controls inflammation in the body, that all depends on proper vagus nerve input. So people who have gallstones or their liver isn't working right, like what tells the, what tells the liver to make bile? What tells the gallbladder to release the bile? It's the uh, vagus nerve. So bile is necessary for fat, uh, fat absorption. So if you have a vagus nerve issue from cervical instability, you could actually have fat malabsorption. You would know you have fat malabsorption because your stools float. Stools are supposed to be the consistency of a banana. They're supposed to slowly <laughs> go down. So you should be checking uh, your stools and whether <laughs> they go down at the right rate. Uh, as I said, the vagus nerve <laughs> stimulates the spleen and the spleen controls inflammation. So if you have inflammation all over your body, like you can't control inflammation, you have an autoimmune disease, you have rheumatoid arthritis, you have uh, lupus, you have, other, you have Sjogren's, you have some other autoimmune disease, you should consider that you actually might have a structural cause of this, the disease, which is cervical instability. Even leaky gut syndrome, even leaky gut syndrome, guess what happens when the vagus nerve doesn't have input uh, to the digestive tract, the tight junctions of the digestive tract, they widen and then you get substances uh, get into the bloodstream that shouldn't. So if you've been treated for a long time for leaky gut and you have an incredible amount of food sensitivities and you're not getting better, you may actually have a structural cause of that condition called upper cervical instability. Uh, 
hampering vagus nerve flow and causing the condition. The good news is that when you have a structural cause for all these conditions, the prognosis is very good. All you need to get is prolotherapy. Prolotherapy is a series of injections. Depending on the case, it can be four visits, six visits, you know, depends on uh, how severe the instability is. The way we monitor somebody, whether the instability is resolving with prolotherapy is by digital motion x-ray. So about every three prolotherapy visits, the person gets a digital motion x-ray to make sure that the cervical instability is getting resolved. Once the instability is resolved and vagus nerve function is back to normal and there's homeostasis in the autonomic nervous system. So I would encourage you, if any of this applies to you, to consider getting a digital motion x-ray and receiving prolotherapy.